this is a situation where sooner or later there's going to be an accident and someone's going to get killed. And that's going to create a crisis, and it's a crisis that is very avoidable if we both sit down and figure out how we can manage this in a way that no one loses face, but also no one loses their life either. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, mounting tensions in the South China Sea. Disputes over sovereignty and maritime rights in the South China Sea have simmered for decades. But escalating tensions, largely between China and the five other countries claiming rights to the passage, are sparking international concern. The waterway, which provides access to much of Asia, is also critical to the U.S. military. China Center Director Ken Lieberthal explains the issue should not be taken lightly. Well, Ken, as we know, there are six countries that are squabbling or have squabbled at some time over sovereignty and maritime rights in the South China Seas. What's the issue? The fundamental issue is a problem of having a, a lot of small islands, archipelagos, uh, which, whose uh, uh, sovereignty is difficult to define, and the reality that there are, many believe, substantial fossil fuel resources under the, that region. Uh, and the fact that almost all of the uh, natural resources for Northeast Asia have to be transported through that, through that region. So this is an area that combines potentially substantial wealth with strategic implications that are uh, very important uh, for Taiwan, for Japan, for South Korea, for China, and for the U.S. military. So all of the countries have claims to the islands or uh, sovereignty in the area in some fashion or another. How is sovereignty established in a situation like this? Occupation is part of what determines sovereignty in international law. And uh, so there are uh, different efforts that have been made over the years to put a lighthouse here or a you know, temporary uh, facility there in order to establish a presence and therefore to strengthen a claim. Uh, in addition, recently especially, China has been very active in trying to assert its own sovereign claims through aggressive actions toward even fishing vessels of other countries in the region. So, you know, the, so this is a very multi-layered, multi-faceted uh, set of tensions out there. It also uh, gets involved with, for example, providing uh, uh, leases for foreign oil companies to drill in some of these contested areas. So Vietnam, which has substantial contested areas with China, has wanted to invite in foreign oil companies to drill for oil and gas in some of those areas that China also claims, and China wants to warn them off. And uh, because they're afraid both that Vietnam will get the resources if that goes through, but also it will more broadly strengthen Vietnam's uh, claims to sovereign territory. This is an issue that dates back decades. So why is there a flare-up now between China and Vietnam? Why are things so contentious at this point? There has been a, a deadline for countries to clarify and justify their claims. And that produced very extensive legal justifications of claims from both the Philippines and Vietnam. Interestingly, both are making very similar arguments. Uh, I don't know whether they've consulted at all on this or not, but really quite sophisticated. So that has produced part of the pushback from China, just seeing these other claims put out there, uh, and they feel they have to respond to it. Um, the, uh, in addition, the Chinese Navy is now a much more substantial force than it was 10 years ago in terms of deployed assets and capabilities. It's no match for the U.S. Navy, uh, but it's substantial in the region now, and clearly the trajectory is steeply upward. Uh, so that we are increasingly encountering uh, more active Chinese effort to make it difficult for us to, uh, for example, carry out intelligence activities based in China's exclusive economic zone, where we do various things to trigger Chinese radars or to, you know, listen for Chinese submarines and so on and so forth, kinds of things navies do. The Chinese get out there now and, and in various instances have engaged in what we consider to be fairly reckless behavior in bringing their boats too close to ours, cutting across uh, where, we, where we've trailed a long antenna that is a, a data gathering device, and they try to cut the antenna by running across our wake and slicing it and that kind of thing. These are things that, frankly, 
we need to reach some agreement with the Chinese on rules of the road. How do these tensions, does this discord impact the United States' interests there? The U.S. has some major concerns out there. First of all, we always want to have peace prevail, and so uh, having, uh, having conflict on the high seas is always problematic. But more particularly, uh, we uh, affirm very strongly our rights to freedom of navigation uh, in other than territorial waters. Uh, and the South China Sea is an extraordinarily important body of water for efficient moving of our Navy from our Pacific fleet to elsewhere where it may be employed, especially in the Persian Gulf area. Uh, so this is a right we take extremely seriously. Let's put the United States' personal interests aside for the moment and talk about the United States as a negotiating arm. This situation presents quite a dicey conundrum for the U.S., doesn't it? The U.S. is uh, now walking a fairly fine line. Uh, between, on the one hand, not taking a position on issues of sovereignty, but on the other hand, strongly encouraging a multilateral negotiation where we've indicated we're happy to facilitate that negotiation, but knowing full well that that is a position supported strongly, especially by Vietnam, uh, and opposed strongly by China. So even though we haven't taken a, a formal position on issues of sovereignty, We've taken a stance that suggests that we really support those who want to limit China's uh, claims. And uh, that inevitably is increasing tensions between the U.S. and China on this issue. Uh, I think that we need to be very careful in how we go about this. Uh, we don't want to become a captive of Vietnam's claims. Uh, we need to be mindful that while China has, as I've indicated repeatedly, been a uh, I would say, on balance, a bad actor here. You know, they've been, they've been doing a lot, actually, on the water, arresting people on fishing vessels from other countries and all kinds of things to assert their claims. They aren't the only ones doing some of these things. And so uh, we do want to have a peaceful outcome. We certainly have strong interests in maintaining freedom of navigation. Uh, but we don't want to inadvertently uh, get ourselves in a position where it looks like we're supporting what everyone else is doing and we're opposing whatever China is doing because the realities are more complicated than that. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.